Our ongoing 100 TV longevity test aims to push TVs to the limit of their durability to examine failure points as they happen. In the past few months, we've investigated a clear but troubling trend. Thin LCD TVs using edge-mounted lighting are inherently prone to significant durability issues and fail faster than other LCD TV designs. Issues manifest in the form of warped reflector sheets, cracked light guide plates, and burnt out LEDs. These problems occur after prolonged use at maximum brightness, posing a significant risk to their long-term reliability. And the damage isn't limited to TVs on our torture test. Once we noticed it, we started seeing it everywhere. As manufacturers continue to push for thinner designs, addressing these durability concerns is imperative to ensure consumer satisfaction and trust. If durability is your main concern, you'll want to stick around as we explore why and how thin LCD TVs break faster than others. Testing products from TVs to toasters is the core of our work here at Ratings.com. We're dedicated to bringing you the most comprehensive review of every product we test. But that doesn't change the fact there's very little information out there about the long-term durability of TVs. To fill that gap, we launched our biggest test to date, the 100TV Accelerated Longevity Test. At the time of this video, our longevity test has been running for over 10,000 hours, representing about six years of use. However, if you've been keeping up with our findings, you'll know that it hasn't taken that long for issues to manifest. We have 18 OLEDs remaining on the test, all of which are burning in as expected. Sorry to disappoint you OLED observers hoping for an update. No, the real meat comes from the LED TVs on the test. 25% of these TVs have noticeable uniformity issues. That's 21 TVs. Digging even further, we find an interesting pattern. Seven of these 21 share a commonality. These TVs are all edge-lit models. Now, seven TVs might not seem like a lot in a grand scale, but considering that we only have 11 edge-lit models on the test in total, well, that's 64% of one type of TV with issues, compared to 20% of both full-array local dimming and direct-lit models. Those aren't good odds. So let's explore what's happening here. As its name suggests, the LED lighting on an edge-lit TV is mounted along the bottom edge. This design allows the TVs to be thinner on average than full-array local dimming or direct-lit models, which have their LEDs secured to the back chassis. It also usually results in worse picture quality overall compared to full-array local dimming TVs. However, for many folks, the picture quality isn't as enticing as the thin size or aesthetic lifestyle considerations. Most of the thinnest LED models we've tested are edge-lit, like Samsung's The Frame 2022 and 2024, the Samsung Q60 series, and the LG QNED 80 2022. You'll notice that those models aren't cheap. This isn't a you-get-what-you-pay-for situation. For example, one of the first TVs we noticed with uniformity issues was Samsung's The Frame 2022, which retailed for $2,000 when it was released. But to be clear, these issues aren't a result of cost cutting or the manufacturer passing the buck of a faulty product onto you. Edge-lit models are, in fact, relatively expensive to manufacture due to their specialized hardware requirements and tight tolerances to ensure an image even displays correctly on your screen. But manufacturers keep making them because thin TVs sell, and they sell quite well. Now, that's a problem. Since, from our investigation, the issues that arise on edge-lit TVs are a consequence of their design. Even though LEDs are extremely efficient at converting electricity into light, they still emit heat. And it's up to manufacturers to manage that heat, since it's the root cause of the cracks, warps, and burnouts that we see. On the left, we have the LG QNED 80 2022, an edge-lit TV with 180 LEDs along the bottom. On the right, we have the Sony X90L, a full-array local dimming TV with 160 LEDs spread across the back. There's a substantial heat gradient on the LG QNED 80. The bottom edge is about 20 degrees or 68 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the top edge. This isn't true for the Sony X90L. Even though it gets substantially brighter than the LG QNED 80, the spacing of the LEDs across the back means the heat distribution is much more uniform, so you don't get these hot spots or heat gradients forming. If we peel back the layers of the QNED 80 and measure the heat of the LEDs themselves, 
we get a steamy 123 degrees Celsius or 253 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a lot of heat concentrated in one small area. Manufacturers of edge-lit TVs try to manage that by using a heatsink. However, the heatsink does little to prevent the reflector sheet or light guide plate from constant exposure to this dense heat. Edge-lit TVs require specialized components and manufacturing to produce an image. It's these design choices that cause failures. For example, the reflector sheet, a layer responsible for ensuring that all light directs out from the front of the screen. All LCD TVs have a reflector sheet, but on edge-lit models, it isn't pinned down within the TV. It's only held in place by the clamshell design to keep the TV thin. This means that there's nothing keeping that sheet taut and tight inside the TV, so it warps due to heat. The effect of the warped sheet appears on screen as dark spots, almost like a Rorschach inkblot. Every edge-lit TV we opened had a reflector sheet in different warping severities. Edge-lit TVs also require a specialized polymer plate known as the light guide plate. This plate diffuses the light, so it illuminates the entire screen. Without it, or if it's even off by a millimeter, the TV is unusable. The bottom edge of the light guide plate sits close to the LED strip. Only some plastic standoffs keep the two from touching. However, the bottom edge is still exposed to the intense heat of the LEDs plus all the stresses caused by the TV heating up and cooling down rapidly. This results in cracking, visible in real content as lines of light shooting up from the bottom of the TV. To use the LG QNET 80 2022 once again, it had upwards of 25 individual cracks in its light guide plate. In extreme cases, like the Samsung AU8000, the heat caused the plastic standoffs to melt. The light guide plate slid down inside the TV and actually fused with the LED strip at the bottom. Finally, the LEDs themselves can eventually burn out, as they did on the Samsung AU8000, and as we believe they're likely to do on the LG QNET 80, as we noted scorch marks around some of the LEDs. Even if they don't burn out entirely, they can start to display a bluish tint, which is generally caused by the degradation of a specific phosphor responsible for turning blue light into white light. This blue tint was especially prominent on some edge-lit models we saw in the wild, which also displayed the telltale signs of cracked light guide plates and warped reflector sheets. So now that you know the how and the why, the next question is, what should you do? The results of our investigation conclude that edge-lit TVs are prone to failure earlier than other LED designs, like full array local dimming or direct lit designs. These issues are brand agnostic. Many models across a variety of brands use edge lighting systems. We haven't tested every single one, but we have tested over 90 in our 10 plus years of testing TVs. But if you already own an edge-lit model and haven't spotted any uniformity issues like Rorschach looking shadows or permanent streaks of light, there are still things you can do to delay those failures. You can reduce your brightness. If you're always on the maximum brightness setting, lower it. This will reduce the amount of heat generated by the LEDs and in turn, increase the amount of time these components that are so affected by heat last. Secondly, ensure the placement of your TV doesn't add additional heat. If you have a TV over a functioning fireplace, cooktop, or other heat emitting appliance, it's best to move it away from external sources of heat that could exacerbate the problem. Outside of that, there's very little you can do to stop the inevitable. The TV will fail at some point but you can extend the life of your display. If you want an edge-lit TV as its thin aesthetic appeals to you, or it's a matter of budget and availability, you should perhaps consider a TV that is brighter than you need it so that you can keep it at a lower brightness more consistently to extend its life. However, if durability is your primary concern when buying a new TV, it's wise to look at models with direct lit or full array local dimming backlighting. Though these designs also use reflector sheets, they're pinned in place so they don't warp. Plus, they lack light guide plates, so there's nothing to crack. It's important to remember that no TV is immune to uniformity issues. Every design will have its flaws and failures, and finding those is the goal of our longevity test. It's also important to remember that products are designed to sell at a specific price point and cater to specific needs. And while we all want the longest life out of our TV models, it's unrealistic to expect manufacturers to build TVs with decades-long durability that are even affordable to most general buyers. We reached out to Hisense, Sony, LG, and Samsung for comment on our results. 
At the time of publication, we've received responses from LG and Samsung. LG's statement notes that while in general, stress points of LCD TVs relate to heat and light, they haven't seen a difference in the defect rate of edge-lit TVs. You can read the full statement on the screen. Samsung's statement reaffirms their commitment to delivering high-quality consumer TVs using edge lighting, as you can also see on the screen. As this test continues, we'll keep investigating the data trends to provide you with the best information possible to make the best purchasing decision. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay informed when we release new results like these. A companion article to this video is also available on the website. The link is in the description below. But before we close out, we want to hear from you. Have you experienced or noticed any of these issues in the wild or in your own home? Each comment helps us understand how widespread this issue is. So together, we can make changes that result in more durable products. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Thanks for watching. If investigations like these interest you, good news! We're looking to grow our display team. We're currently hiring a display specialist, someone who loves TVs just as much as we do. If you're interested, check out the link to the job posting below.